we left off here looking at calculating distance if you're given speed and time, which is the more likely possibility. To do this, we have to rearrange a formula. The only way to get rid of a divide by times is to multiply by time, but it's an equation. So what we do to the left, we must do to the right or it will cease to balance. And this allows a cancellation. And that will bring us to this formula here. D is speed times time. These two are the same formula. They're just expressed differently. This is where the text will try to teach you that you're learning two new things. Yeah, you, you haven't. This would be like computing your rate of pay dollars per hour. This is the more likely scenario. The boss tells you your rate, you're making 15 bucks an hour, gives you the time, you calculate a total. Now notice I put the time on the right. Please put the time on the right. Don't put it on the left. It's standard convention in math to put the time on the right side. If you don't, it'll still work, but you look like one of those idiots eating corn from the end of the cob or a sandwich from the side. It just looks wrong. Dimensional analysis comes in when we stop looking at the numbers themselves and just looking at the letters. And this allows us to see if our formula is correct. So a classic old math problem is the teacher is solved for X. So you and your friends are told seven is equal to 14 over X. What is X? So you try three different approaches. You try seven over 14. Your other friend tries 14 by seven. You know, third person tries 14 divided by seven. You just slamming away every equation, like throwing spaghetti against the wall. And finally you come up with the brilliant idea. Maybe we could average our answers to 33 and a half. This, is the kind of behavior I hate to see in students. You're, you're not thinking, you're just slamming away at this. Now I would hope that you would realize that this one, the answer is two by simple inspection. X must be two because 14 divided by two is seven. All right. But we want to be able to confirm that it's true. We can't verify this answer in this, this way. You simply have to go, did I get the right answer or not? I don't know why by just being able to pick it out by inspection or randomly trying three different math approach and seeing which one matches what's in the answer section of the textbook. You need to leave that behind. That's just a poor way of, it's no way of understanding. You don't know what it is you're doing. Now, in terms of a formula, that's what I'm asking you here. We just rearranged this formula and we thought D is equal to speed over time. Okay, well, we didn't. We actually thought it was this one down here but you could have got this or you could have got this. So now the prior puzzle you've already handled in grade nine, the seven is equal to 14 over X. Now we have a thing where if you rearrange a formula, how do you know which one of these three rearrangements is correct? I already showed you this is the correct one, but when you're working on your own, you might've got these two and you think you've done it correctly and you haven't. And this is where dimensions come in. Dimensions are the real world parameters of a number. In math class, you have a number like seven, but in physics, it has to be like seven meters. So let's say you are under the impression that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and you have an arch enemy in class because I'm tired of it being a friend. This guy hates your guts. He wants you dead, and he thinks the area of a circle is two pi r. Now, how do we handle this? The obvious traditional solution is a knife fight, but none of you have taken knife fight training, so you're not allowed to do that. So instead, what we do is we take our formula. We don't put in numbers. We put in the units. So you expect that you're going to measure distance in meters. So the units or the numbers get canceled. Just remove them. We know that R is going to be measured in meters. The square bracket says, don't tell me the number, just tell me the units attached. And the only units in this formula are straight up meters. Well, that is not what you're expecting as an answer for area. This area is not in meters. That would be like saying Toronto is 80 liters away. There's something wrong, not with the number, but with the unit. This formula cannot possibly be correct because it's not generating an answer that will be measured in air in meters squared. It's wrong. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. The concept is wrong. So then you take your formula 
and you go, but I think it's two pi r squared. Once again, the two pi doesn't matter. It's like the number six, it's gone. The units we are measuring in, square brackets means, tell me the units, are meters. Meters squared or m squared. Wait a minute. That's exactly the units we expected to be in area. So when you're debating in your head, and why did I pick 2 pi r and pi r squared? You wouldn't believe how many times over the years kids get those two confused. And there's a very simple thing. It better have two units of distance, square units to be area, cubed units to be volumes. And if it's not measuring area or volume, then it's not going to have any power on a distance. Okay. So dimensions allow us a means of double checking that math class does not give you. So let's take a look at our three possible formulas. This is the correct one. These two are erroneous. If we assume this number is correct, or this rearrangement is correct, then the units are meters per second over seconds, which is this. That is not the units of distance. If we do this one, we get seconds over meters per second. And the answer is seconds squared per meters. Don't sound like distance to me. In fact, it doesn't even seem to make sense. Uh, dude, how tall are you? Yeah. 1.4 seconds squared per meter? No, no, that's not distance. But that one is. And this is why we want you to keep the units. I was able to do much better in physics than math, which is generally considered the wrong way. Most kids are not, they're better at math than physics. I was the other way around because in the end, my bad math errors, I could catch them in physics using this method. Now we can also use common sense along with this formula. Look at this question. Car drives for two hours at 100 kilometers an hour. What is the total distance it drives? There's our time. There's our speed. And we've been asked to find distance. We itemize our knowns and unknowns. We use this formula. We plug in our numbers, keeping the units. I put them in a separate color to help. And you get an answer. And the answer, those units canceled out perfectly to give us expected units. If I wrote it this way to make it a little bit clearer, I put the numbers in front. There is a numerical answer. What you have to get used to doing is keeping these units. Now, I should have put a bracket here. I didn't, I goofed. But this is the way I would like you to present it. And no time sign. Always just use brackets and just butt the things together. Do not use X for times. It'll cause trouble later on. Okay? So there's the unit analysis. This formula is may not be correct but it's giving us the correct unit. So we're pretty certain this is the correct formula. And the units would cancel like that. Now I want you to think about this answer. You drove two hours traveling 100 kilometers for every hour you traveled. Doesn't it make sense to multiply these values? There is meaning here. Again, this is what makes it physics, not mathematics. Keep the bloody units. Don't believe me? Listen to this example. Hey, uh, boss, how much are you paying me today? Four. Okay. The numbers are meaningless without those units. Next, we're going to solve for time. But I'm out of time. Isn't that convenient? So tune in for the exciting part three solving for time.